Good morning, everyone, and happy Christmas to you all. This is going to be a service of Holy Eucharist from the Book of Common Prayer, and our service is found on page 67. But first, I'm going to ask Marilyn Elms to come forward and offer the Christmas anthem. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Glory, excuse me, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our hymn is number 125, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bread a cattle stall. Oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swift are winging, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing, Christ the babe is Lord of all, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saba glory heard the story, Tidings of a gospel true, thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet tomorrow. Christ the babe was born for you. Christ the babe was born for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, Ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with such confidence behold him when he shall come again to be our Judge, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen. And our first lesson. A reading from Hebrews. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth the first world, firstborn into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And again he saith, Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shall they, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Here endeth the lesson. Our gradual psalm today, Psalm 98, verses 5 to 7. Show yourselves joyful unto the Lord, all ye lands. Sing, rejoice, and give thanks. Praise the Lord upon the harp. Sing, Sing to, to the, the harp with a song of thanksgiving. With trumpets also and the sound of the horn. You will show yourselves joyful before the Lord with the king. Our hymn is number 126, Away in a Manger. Away in a manger, 
Welcome the Reverend Marilyn Newport to bring us both the gospel and the sermon. The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, so, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The waiting is over. The Messiah has come. A child is born. Our life and our light. You may have noticed that this gospel doesn't read quite the way as the other three gospels do in telling the story of the birth of Christ. The first three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are known as the synoptic gospels, and they tell of the disciples' experience of their journey with God, of their journey with Jesus and what it was like. So they tell the story. John, when he wrote his, 
took it a little deeper and tried to make sense of the meaning behind it. What is this? Was this Jesus just the next in a line of prophets and judges and kings? Was it just the next way for God to try to get the message through that we are children of God? But he says no. He begins his gospel. In the beginning was the word. John understands this event to be about beginnings. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So on this day to begin from this way, what does one do as a preacher? I have felt over the years that the readings assigned for each service provided so many options for preachers, sometimes it was hard to decide. Often we lead with the gospel, but I've preached on the Old Testament, the Psalm, the New Testaments, the gospel. I've preached on canticles, I've preached on colics, and I've preached on prayers. But only because of how the words speak to me. And when Matthew asked if I would preach, and he told me what the reading was, I didn't even have to look it up. The first thing that was there was in the beginning was the word. Now, I have preached on single words. So was the single word to be preached on today the word? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Do you have particular words that have come to you in different ways and in different times that hold some significant moment for you? Capture? Can you think of any? Words have always painted a picture for me. Um, I painted a dream once, and when I finished it, I realized I had actually painted words in amongst it all. And when I color mandalas, by the time I finish, there are words I'm writing on the page around it. But there's one piece of scripture that I have quoted more often in my life than any other. In the beginning, God created for me, that was period, full stop. Everything and everybody stems from these five words. And this is the first time in all these years of reading this gospel that in the beginning was the word. In the very beginning was the word, and all things stem from there. So God's creation stems from there. <coughs> But the word was with God. The word, Jesus, was the word. Jesus wasn't the next in line for God to make himself known amongst us. He was there from the beginning. And he goes on to say, we didn't know him. We didn't know him. So I stopped to think about the word. And I was reminded of and went back and checked this out. In one of my programs, I was given a list of names for God, a list of images. So I, I pulled it out and looked at it, and they were broken into categories. One was a neutral category, and that had 30 images. There was another one with just other images, were 34. Masculine, 13, feminine, seven. I counted them, 84 in total on the list. But you know what wasn't there? It was the word. The word, at the heart of it all, how do we hear these words? How do we make sense of this birth of a child in this way? The arrival in a manger. The yes from a virgin, betrothed but not married. The husband does not disown her. He stays with her. And the story continues, and it continues. And Mary pondered these things in her heart until the wedding at Cana when she spoke up and said, do something about this, throw out of wine. She treasured these things. We treasure this season. We have our precious, we have our nativity scenes and our traditions in our homes. 
the ability to come out and sing carols. I hope everybody at home is singing to your heart's content. But in the end, when we talk about it in the terms of words, what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. How do we hear Jesus as the word? What does listening to the word sound like? Do you hear words differently? Do you hear words of love or light differently than you hear words of ju judgment or forgiveness or acceptance? They generate different feelings in us, don't they? Don't they? They do. And it's different whether we're reading a bedtime story to our children or grandchildren or reading the newspaper, a novel, or scriptures. We read them differently, don't we? We do. We do. I know reading to my children and my grandchildren, I read very slowly. I made sure that they captured and understood the words, that they saw the pictures and understood what the picture was saying about the story. I wonder what it would be like if we read scripture that way. As a story where we stopped and, and took in the images. But in the end, when we're talking about the word, it's about how we listen. And how we listen depends on the circumstance, doesn't it? What would it feel like to listen as Samuel did? Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. What if we were to pause absolutely everything and let go of it and just open ourselves up to the mystery? open ourselves up to new possibilities, to new wonders, to new life, to new beginnings. Brother James Keister from the Society of St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge came to Halifax one year and led the clergy in a retreat. It's our pre-Holy Week retreat that we have each year. And he spoke about listening with the ears of our hearts. And often with the, with the ears of our mind, don't we? How we understand the words. He suggested, what if we listen with the ears of our hearts? The heart is the seat of our emotion. It's the place of our passion. It's the source of our love. What if we were to listen and allow our emotions to be touched? Let our passions be aroused. Let our love be kindled. That would really suggest that we're participating in a conversation, wouldn't it? To stop and pause and take it in. On this day, the birth of a baby in a manger who was is and will be the light in our darkness, the love that fills our hearts with wonder and joy. On this day, we give thanks for new beginnings, fresh starts, hope, peace, joy, and most of all, God's love. May we go from this day into many more new beginnings when we listen to the word with our hearts. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to the word that was in the beginning. Amen. Our Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified as Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Our hymn is number 117, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church militant here in earth. <clears throat> Almighty and everlasting, ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, 
we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity and concord and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love we beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace and grant unto thy servant elizabeth our queen <clears throat> and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue give grace o heavenly father to all bishops priests and deacons that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth by thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments prosper we pray thee all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life and we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness O Lord to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble sorrow need sickness or any other adversity and especially for those for whom our prayers are desired our prayers this morning are bid for adam audrey ernie catherine Charlene, Chris, Jack, Jason, Joan, Judy, Laura, Lisa, Marilyn, Marilyn, Olivia, Ron, Sarah, Sue, Vi, and for all those we name now, both aloud and in the silence of our hearts. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom grant this O father for jesus christ's sake our only mediator and advocate to who with thee and the holy ghost be all honor and glory world without end Amen. He that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life, 
following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath forgive, promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said off to all them that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation of our sins. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is, meet and right so it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only son, to be born as at this time for us, who by the operation of the Holy Spirit was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary his mother, and that without spot of sin, to make us clean from all sin. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, and be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, to make before thee in the sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards all. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. We'll conclude with our final hymn, The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy, number 128. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy, and they say that his name was Jesus. He come for the glory. He come for the glorious kingdom. He come for the glory. He come for the glorious kingdom. Oh. Oh, yes, believer, he come for the glory, he come for the glorious kingdom. The angel sang when the baby was born, the angel sang when the baby was born, the angel sang when the baby was born, the sang the baby was born. and proclaim him the Savior, Jesus. He come for the glory, he come for the glorious kingdom, he come for the glory, he come for the glorious kingdom. Oh yes, believer, oh yes, believer, he come for the glory, he come for the glorious kingdom. The wise men went where the baby was born. The wise men went where the baby was born. The wise men went where the baby was born, and they say that his name was Jesus. He come for the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. He come for the glory. He come from the glorious kingdom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, believer, 
He come for the glory. He come for the glorious kingdom. Thank you for joining us in worship today. I want to give you thanks as well for all those who gave generously to our various outreach programs this year. Uh, the meatballs from Margaret, Margaret's house, the warm clothesline, the East Dartmouth Christian Food Bank, and the Christmas hampers, which had to change this year because of COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, for those who agreed to have their donations of uh, hampers and turkeys turned into gift cards, thank you very much for continuing to support this program. Uh, we want to pray for those in whose memory uh, gifts have been given to the church at this time. Uh, Christmas food support was given in memory of Jack Muriel and Helen Armitage by Jacqueline Ketty, Colin by Roberta Smith, Gerald Brennan by Jean Heckman Brennan, Fred and Vern Wyatt and Helen and Fred Murphy by Faye and Glenn Murphy, and the intention to give turkeys to the hampers in memory of Bernice Boudreau by Jerry Boudreau, uh, which was also turned into gift cards. Uh, donations for flowers here at the altar were given in loving memory of George by Sheila Cook, our mothers Gail and Faye by Katie and Matthew Sponigle, Clarence by Norma and family, our loving parents by Bruce and Joan Cunningham, Archie Brown and Barbara Purvis by Nora Brown, Michael Greenfield and Evelyn and Bert Moynard by Ed and Charlene Greenfield, William and Gladys Vardy by Pam, Gail and families, W.H. Murray and Kirk Zink by Patricia Zink, Raymond, Hazel and Stanley Gammon by Susan George, and Bernice Boudreau by Jerry Boudreau. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord and my light perpetual shine upon them. And on behalf of the wardens and parish council of St. Luke's Church, and on behalf of my family, Katie, Ben, and Leo, I want to extend to you warm wishes for this Christmas season, and I want to pray for a bright and COVID-free new year. Please keep safe and healthy, and know that we are here to support each other through this difficult time. Thank you for joining us in worship this day and look for our regular services offered online on Sundays and Wednesdays. God bless.